so this last session uh, that we're going to uh, um, go through right now is on victory. Okay. So it's about possibilities. I think the last one, the previous one was also about that overcoming. Right. So just for us to reiterate this, that it is possible. Amen. Right. When we look at the struggle, when we look at the, you know, the, the, the intensity of the battle and uh, the, the complexity of the problem, sometimes you know, we, we look at the solution and we think, oh, it's, it seems so simple. <laughs> right? it's so, it seems so simple. I resist. I speak the word. Is that it? Right? But the fact is that um, it's a key. Right? The key that God places in our hands and we need to use it. And I just want to say that it is possible. Amen. It is possible to walk in freedom. It is possible to walk in victory. And that victory is for all of us. Right? No matter what the degree of difficulty or the intensity of the problem, you know, there is the victory that God has given for us. So I just want to uh, you know, reiterate that. And we, we are looking at session 4 and page 16 that we have been positioned and resourced or provisioned for victory. Amen. Um, the, the scripture that we saw earlier, 2 Peter 1 and, and verses 2 to 4, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Right? All things that pertain to godliness has been given for us. I don't know if that has sunk in, but it needs to, right? Even before we go further, because we, we're going to talk about some simple things, some strategies that we are, you know, personal battle plans that we could have. But this is key, to know that we have been resourced. And not only that, we have been positioned, right? We have been positioned strategically. Why? Because we are on this side of the cross. Right? And we looked at what has happened on the cross, even the very propensity to sin, the body of sin has been destroyed. That thing that was generating this thing called sin, you know, generating that, that pull, that has been destroyed. That has been taken away on the cross. And our enemy, his power has been destroyed. His weapons have been disarmed. Right? That's the truth. That's the reality. And that's why the cross is so powerful. It is central to our faith. Right? Without the cross, there's no Christianity. There's, you know, there's no victory. There's no freedom. But because of the cross, everything comes together. Amen. Everything is in place. So that is something that we really need to take in internalize and get a revelation of right and that has to be there you know all that has been given to us right the finished work of the cross the word of god right? the blood of jesus that great sacrifice and the work of the holy spirit you know each one of us having that the holy spirit the holy spirit who was there at creation just think about it the Holy Spirit was there at creation when there was nothing and, and when, God, when he was just brooding over the waters, that Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who came on the prophets, the Holy Spirit who came, you know, we've been studying about Book of Acts, the Holy Spirit who came uh, in Acts chapter 2 on the apostles and filled them, the 120 uh, disciples and, and, uh, and the same Holy Spirit indwells us. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient. Right and uh, what did I miss out? Omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Yes. So he's here. He's with us. He's in us. Amen. So we have been resourced, just like how the world has got a pull, how the world has laid out a track, how the world has a system designed to make us fall. Right. The world has designed a system to to make us fall and it has its own agenda because of the powers of darkness to trip up, to stump, make up, you know, to make every believer fall. Just like that, we have been given a better plan 
resources that are even more powerful and we have been positioned in such a place. Amen. Amen. So just turn to your neighbor and say, sin shall not have dominion over you. Right? You are not a slave of sin. Amen. You know, that's a very serious declaration. You know, you're not a slave of sin. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Right? And it's not a feel-good statement. We know that, right? It is word, it is truth, and it is based on what Jesus did for us on the cross. Sin shall not have dominion over us. Right? So with that in the backdrop, the cross, the blood of the Lamb, the, the word of God, which is all powerful, and the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, indwelling work of the Holy Spirit in us and upon us. With that backdrop, we look at the fact that God gives this instruction. And what is that? Ephesians 5 and verses 1 to 3 says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly, uh, or as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must, not even, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. If you, if you notice that phrase, it says, not even be a hint of sexual immorality immorality right so that's god's standard and he and he puts this standard because it's his very nature he is holy this is his character which is holiness and righteousness and he gives us that standard now without this backdrop of you know the cross and the blood and the word and the holy spirit it, it, it might seem like a very legalistic thing god it's too high a standard how can i ever live up to it how can I ever measure up to it? Right? And how can I ever do this in my own strength? And you know, how can I ever do this? I'm finite, you're infinite. How can I ever do this? But with this backdrop, you know, we can echo, we can agree with the truth and say, yes, God, it is possible. Yes, it is possible. Because this is what you have done, this is what you have resourced, this is what you have given me, it is possible. So the first thing that we need to dispel in our minds is the fact that, you know, we cannot walk in victory. We come to such conclusions because of repeated failure. You say, hey, I tried. I tried so many times. In fact, I've tried for decades. <laughs> and say, you know, I've tried when I was single, I tried when I was married, I tried when, you know, I have children. It's not worked. I failed, right? And we come to that conclusion that it is not possible. But we go back to the word. We go back to what God has given us. And with that revelation, right, receiving the truth, we can declare, sin shall not have dominion over me. Amen. Man. So the thing is this, this is God's standard. So God's standard works. Right? It is possible to live, live up to God's standard because we have been resourced, because we have been empowered, because we have been given these precious promises by which we may be partakers of his divine nature. Right? But if we compromise on the standard or in our own minds we think that Hey, this is God's standard, but I'm going to redefine this standard now. It does not work. Right? No matter how much I try, it does not work because we have already compromised. Right? We have redefined the standard. And the Bible is very clear, you know, let there not be a hint of sexual immorality. So it's really time for us to get real. Get real and say, you know, Ask us ourselves some questions. I want to be real about this. Question number one. Where am I drawing my sexual gratification from? Right. Let there not be a hint of sexual immorality. So the question is, where am I drawing my gratification from? 
Sexual purity is ensuring that there is no sexual gratification from anyone or anything apart from one's spouse. And if you're single, to say that, I will wait. Right? That we're not, you know, we're not compromising on God's standard and say, okay, maybe, you know, develop those ten hints and have a paragraph and say, you know, I know this is there, I'll accommodate this. Right? To say that, let there not even be a hint. So to, to ask ourselves the tough question, you know, and also make some declarations. I will not have a hint of sexual immorality. You know, to make that, that, to make that question, I mean, to make that standard, to draw that line in the sand. Right? I think it even helps, you know, if married men, it even helps to say, you know, I will not look at something. I will not look at sex, sexually explicit content. I will not sleep with anyone apart from my wife. I think it's, it's good to be graphic and, and to just declare it to yourself. You need to, you know, we need to hear ourselves say that. Maybe we've not even said it. Maybe we've not even thought like that. But to say, you know, I will not compromise. Right? I will not compromise. With anything or anyone. There's no gratification from anyone or anything apart from one's spouse. Second question to really get real, what is the basis of my identity, self-worth and self-esteem? Where am I drawing it from? To get a, take a hard look at ourselves, hard look at our lives, hard look at our profession and say, where am I drawing this from? Is it from Christ? Is it from what God had, uh, Jesus has dis, de, uh, declared over me who I am to him and who he is to me. Is it from that that I get my identity or is it from anything else? Is it from my work? Is it from my education qualification? Is it from my you know, bank balance? It is, is it, where am I drawing my identity from? Is it from the approval of people? Is it from the approval of man? Where am I drawing my identity from? Okay, so real victory starts with our decision, with that choice. Right? Starts with the decision. I want victory. Right? I want victory. You know, many times we, yeah, we, we want to get out of the situation, but we really do not want victory. Just think about it. We really don't want victory. Because if we want to have victory, then we want it, we need it according to adhering to God's standard, right? By adhering to his full standard. So do we really want that kind of victory, right? So we say, okay, I'm going to deal with this, whatever it takes in order to get victory. I'm going to go with God's way of dealing with this problem. I've dealt it in my way. I've dealt it with my own redefined standards of holiness and purity. But I want to deal with it in God's way. Right? To say, to tell ourselves that, yes, I want victory at any cost. I want to see victory. I want to see through to the end of this problem. So if we want, you know, God has given us his righteousness. He has clothed us with his righteousness. You know, that's what we see, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. Right? For he knew him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? That is the righteousness that we are clothed with. But also we know that it's an everyday walk. Right? This holiness and righteousness is an everyday walk. And if we want to see holiness in action, it's, it's a series of Choices that we make in every situation and at every moment, every day. Right? So, impurity of eyes and mind, maybe it's like a habit, but it really fights like a deadly addiction. Right? When we want to make changes, it fights like an addiction. So we need to be aware of that, even as we make that decision. It's going to fight like an addiction. It might, they, I might have cold turkey, I might have withdrawal symptoms. It's going to fight like an addiction, but I'm prepared to go through. Right? I'm prepared to fight. 
So if we had habitually chosen or made wrong decisions in the past, now it's time to habitually make those right choices, make those righteous choices, right? So holiness in action is a, it's a series of actions. It's a series of choices. It's an everyday thing. So there could be a three-layered defense, right? Three-layered perimeters around our eyes, around our mind, and our heart. Right? And these boundaries are there to protect. So we'll start with our eyes. And the pastor mentioned that, you know, about very briefly he said, you know, you bounce your eyes. So we're just going to talk about that. And, and of course, we are you know, sharing this with, with that background always there, right? Otherwise, it becomes a, a series of some mental gymnastics or, you know, something that you do, uh, some, you know, self-help thing. No, but it, it is with this, with this grand picture or tapestry of this great truth behind us, right? And then it makes sense. So, when we look at our, when we consider our eyes, you know, Job 31 and verse 1, he says, I have made a covenant with my eyes, why then should I look upon a young woman? Okay. So Job is saying, I've made a covenant with my eyes. So maybe we can make a covenant. It's not a contract. It's not something that we can compromise. We say, I want to make a covenant with my eyes. I have made a covenant with my eyes. So one of the things that we can do is to bounce our eyes. Okay. To bounce our eyes. Maybe our eyes are focused and stayed on objects of lust and sensual sights. But we need to build a reflex action. Right? We, we, we looked at the brain, we studied the brain and said every time we looked, every time we, we lingered, every time we gazed upon, there was a chemical high that we received and that caused us to lock in and it formed a habit. Right? But now, how would it be if we reverse that? Right? If we reverse that, where we don't look and gaze and linger, but we bounce our eyes. Right? Which means we glance away, we look away if, there are, if there's anything uh, like a sexually, imp imp uh, sexually explicit image or uh, a video or something, we look away. Right? It's, it's like how we reflexively... Uh, like jerk our hands off when we touch a fire or touch something hot or, you know, maybe a hot plate or something. You just touch it and then, you know, you don't keep it there, do you? <laughs> you don't keep it there. Instinctively, we, we take it back. So just want to propose to us, you know, can we glance our eyes away? Can we bounce our eyes reflexively? You make a covenant with your eye, and you say, you know, I'm going to bounce my eye. Now, it's not just when we say sexually explicit image or video, maybe we're thinking about porn, maybe we're thinking about, you know, all those kinds of things, but it's, you know, it's, it's also female body parts, right? Even as you go down the road, even as you, you know, maybe it's an office situation, maybe it's an office party or, a, or in a work situation, you know, you don't gaze on female body parts. It's as you know, explicit as that, it's as descriptive as that, right? So we don't gaze. You bounce away. We bounce our eyes off, right? And it can become a righteous reflex and a righteous habit. Amen. It can become a righteous reflex. So you've, you've trained your, you know, your brain, you've told your eye, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bounce off. And believe me, even as we do this, even as we continue on this, you will see that it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. You know, when I started going off sugar uh, a couple of months off, I thought it's, go it's going to be so difficult. It's going to be so difficult. How can I not have my morning coffee, Kota's coffee, filter coffee, you know, without sugar? I need it. Right? Your, my body needs it. And I, I know a lot of people said, you know, you don't, just try it. You'll actually, no, I said, no, I can't. But then I did it. It was difficult. Right? During the day, it was like, oh, I, I think I, I need one more coffee. Maybe I should have something with you. It was difficult. But you do it over and over again, and then you realize, hey, I don't miss it anymore. 
you become used to it. Right? So I just want to you know, encourage us, try that. Do that. Right? It's not just our willpower. By the Spirit, we are putting to death the deeds of the body. So it is just a simple hack, but it's by the Spirit that we do this. The Holy Spirit reminds you, hey, don't. So you just bounce. The second thing we can do, so it becomes a righteous habit as we stay consistent. The second thing we can do is to starve the eyes. You know, what we starve dies and what we feed grows. And there is a continuous supply of sensual images every day, every moment, every environment in today's culture. But if we can starve our eyes of this by bouncing our eyes, you know, our imaginations, our thoughts go, to, go through a detox. Our thoughts, our imaginations, everything, it goes through a detox and it's like a weight off. There's so much clarity, right? There's no fogginess. And suddenly, you know, we walk. The righteous are as bold as a lion. You know, he who walks with integrity walks securely and all that confident and everything comes back because there's a detox that has happened. The mind is clear again. It's not polluted. So starve the eyes and lay the axe to the root of the lust of the eyes. What is causing this? What are these triggers? And we're going to discuss that uh, in our question section. Right? Second thing, our mind. You know, we need to guard our minds because the real battle is in the mind. The real battle is in the mind. It's in the realm of our thoughts. Right? Where we justify where we reason and where we say, hey, I've had a stressful day. I, I really need this, right? I've gone through a lot and I need this for my reward. And, you know, we reason things out. We justify our actions. Right? So we need to protect our minds. And First Peter 2 and verse 11, this is what I said, says, you know, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Okay. So these fleshly lusts really war against the soul. Soul realm of mind and imagination and thoughts. It's like you know, something being punched there. You know, punching holes in our thinking. Punching holes in our you know, thought processes. Weakening our thinking. Weakening our will. You know, I remember asking a, a friend... You, you know, we had a problem with, you know, uh, addiction and, and drinking, actually. So I just asked him, you know, a simple question. You know, can you think of going through one full day without having a drink? Just think, right? I don't want you to go through the day without drinking, but can you just think that, uh, you know, in, imagine a full day, 24 hours, without picking up a, a glass, because, with, without a drink? And you know what the answer was? He said, no, I can't. Not even in my thoughts can I imagine such a day. Which means that the fleshly lusts, which wars against our thinking patterns and you know, everything that our mind is, it's, it's capable of damaging, create, or, or, you know, it's capable of bringing, wreaking such a damage that our mind is so, our will is so battered that we are not able to say yes to the things that God wants us to say yes to. We are not able to say no to the things that God wants us to say no to. Right? Our will is so weakened because fleshly lusts war. It's a battle. It's war against our soul. So we need to make sure that the thoughts that we think, the thoughts be aware of the thoughts that we think. Be aware of what our mind is imagining. Be aware of what we are you know, constantly thinking of, imagining, fantasizing even. Right? And the Holy Spirit is there. He's there to give us a check on the inside of us. And you say, hey, you need to change. You need to change this. You need to stop it. The thing is, we reason out or we... Just go, just push past that signal, push past that message, push past that warning, right? So he's there to help us, he's there to help us pull down the strongholds in our mind, 
and thought patterns that have become tolerant or compromise, he's there to pull it down. So we need to repent, which means not just feel remorse, not just feel bad that, oh, it's something has been exposed. Repent is to make a hard decision saying that I will not do it. Right? And actually, you know, our soul, you know, our decision is so strong. When we engage our will and we say, you know, I will not, it is actually very strong. Right? And so, repent, make a choice, submit, be yielded to God. The Bible talks about how we need to yield our members as instruments of righteousness to God. Every member, right, our whole self, yield, submit to God and say, Lord, I'm yours, God. You purchased me with your precious blood. I'm your purchased possession. I'm yours. Submit. Reject. Reject every suggestion from the enemy when you know it's from the enemy. Right? The Bible says, submit to God. Resist the devil. Right? With the submission, when, with our yieldedness comes authority. It's not without that. Right? With our yieldedness, with our submission comes authority. So we reject. We resist. But before that we submit. And then we renounce the works of the enemy. We renounce the works, whatever has been there, we renounce and we remove Every strong, every stone in that stronghold, every stone in that fort, which could be an imagination, which could be a thought, which could be an action, we remove it. Then that's what we see in Romans chapter 12. It says, do not be conformed, verses 2, uh, sorry, verse 2, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So he says, don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And verse 1 says, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know, you present your body as a living sacrifice. You know, when we say sacrifice, it's to give up a right. It is to yield, submit, surrender, and we are actually giving up our right. Sacrificing, giving up. So, maybe... We need to forfeit the right, give up the right to think, imagine, and fantasize about women. Maybe we need to forfeit the right to watch online content alone, if required. You know, if that's our condition, maybe we need to forfeit that. Maybe we need to forfeit to be on social media. Right? Maybe things are so bad, maybe we need to forfeit that on our right to do be there. Maybe uninstall some apps, just remove them. Forfeit the right to send or receive texts of even a mildly flirtatious nature. Right? Sometimes we, maybe it's not an image, but these are texts, emails, colleagues, maybe some friends. And we entertain conversations, texts and you know, it's, you know it's improper. You know, if you're a married man, you know it's improper. Even if you're a single person, you know it's improper to go down that path. But, with, you know, it feels good. Hey, somebody's giving me attention. I feel wanted. I feel approved. And then we continue on with the conversation. And it takes a turn and takes a direction that it should not have. Right? Forfeit the right to send, send such texts. Forfeit the right to even respond to such texts. Maybe it has come. Person, you know, is saying that, oh, you, you are so, your smile is like this, you are like that, you know, don't even respond. Or you say, praise God. I mean, that's a great response. <laughs> That'll just kill it. Right. Forfeit the right to indulge in trashy, trashy conversation or coarse humor. You know, office party is a difficult thing, office party. Maybe you are the boss and then, uh, you know, everybody's had a few drinks and you don't drink and then everybody's, you know, all these jokes and, and uh, yeah, forfeit the right to indulge in such humor, right? So that's about our mind and, you know, about our heart. The Lord desires truth in our innermost being, right? It's not just about the external, but Really, within us, he desires truth. You know why? Because he is the way and he is the truth and he is the life. Right? He desires truth in our innermost beings. 
So he looks beyond our speech, looks beyond our actions, and he looks into our heart, the motives and intents of our heart. Right? And when we say, when we, you know, this verse about make, so, make no provision for the flesh, and I'm just reminded so many times, you know, in my life, I've made provision for the flesh. Made provision. Outside, I would say, you know, yeah, no, you know, I, I'm fine, I'm all this, and, but inside there is a provision. You know, we used to have these two kids as neighbors, and uh, they used to spend a lot of time in our house, and this is before, you know, our daughter was born, and they used to really enjoy spending time in our house. So they will come and play, and, uh, you know, Baskar and Savita. So the mother would say, Baskar, Savita, come home. If you don't come, we lock the door. Door lock. That's what the mother will say. Come, it's, it's 8 o'clock, door lock. So, Savita will run away. Okay, yeah, I'm coming, she'll go. But Baskar, he's clever. <laughs> he leaves a toy there. Some doll, some, you know, car. He'll just leave that. And say, hey, Baskar, you left. Said, it's okay, uncle, it's okay. He'll go. And then he'll go home and say, Hey, I left that. I need it. I need to go back. And then after five minutes, he's back. He's back and he'll say, Vaska, go home. No, he's playing. No, no, uncle, it's okay. Then the mother will call again and then this time, you know, by the tone, you know, it'll be door lock. So, so he just goes there. You know, like that, our actions are, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming home. You know, I know. You called me. I'm coming. But then in our heart, it's like, I leave a bookmark. I leave a provision so that I can come back. I can go back. No. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So what is in our heart will ultimately come out, will ultimately manifest it will show up in our life. It will show up in our speech. It will show up in our action. It will show up. So keep your heart with all diligence. If you want to change what's happening in our life, we need to change what we are putting in. We need to guard our heart. Amen. So we can bounce our eyes. We need to renew our mind, renew our thinking, bring down the strongholds, do this intentionally, and to guard our heart. What is our motivation? Really take a hard look at ourselves and be true to ourselves. Be true to ourselves. Now, I just want to say that that uh, you know I struggled many years with uh, with you know I won't say pornography. This is this is the days before the smartphone and all that. So, uh, but but yeah, I guess you can say sexually explicit images and. Uh, when a one thing leading to another and, you know, uh, masturbation and all that. And so I didn't have any problems as long, long as I was not a believer, right? But I became a believer, then everything was like, oh man, this is a standard. So the initial days or initial months were fine. But after that, there was great conviction. I was, I was again, challenged. I was guilty. And I, I thought, okay, now the only solution is marriage. I know that after marriage, everything will be fine. Got married, but things didn't go away. Things didn't change. Because marriage doesn't take care of, you know, a renewing of our mind. Intentionally, we need to renew. We need to take care of what's going on in our thoughts, in our imaginations, in our minds. So I continued on. Pornography, masturbation. I thought, okay, once, you know, I have children, once I have, you know, my daughter and all that will be fine because, you know, uh, there's this sense of love and affection and I know that there will be change. No change. Right? And all this is happening to a spirit-filled, tongue-talking, worship-leading believer. <laughs> worship-leading, not at ABC, by the way. <laughs> Everybody's thinking, maybe it was yesterday. <laughs> That's the thing, no? Time frame, yesterday. No, this was years ago, before you know, God really cleared this and put me into ministry, right? So it was a struggle. You know, you know that this is, these are the promises of God. You know this is what you're called to, but then you're struggling. Right? And so I'm living a double life. Monday to Friday, 
was a, you know, I was traveling on work. I used to work for this company. I'm in corporate sales. I'm traveling. I'm going to different places. I'll check into a hotel, right, and go through the day's work and come back and watch the whole night, whole night. You know, from the rising of the sun to the going down, it's the other way around, from the going down of the sun to the, you know, rising of the sun, whole night I'm sitting in front of the television, watching these images leading to masturbation. And you know, sin loves company, right? Sin loves company, it comes in groups and it says, okay, buy one, you take this, this is also free. So it's saying, you know, things that I've given up, right? It's saying, hey, why don't you try? I think it's time for a drink to, you know, douse that pain. So I started drinking, binge drinking. And then maybe it's time to light up. So all the coming as a package. So this believer, born again, spirit filled, leading worship on Sundays. Weekdays, it's the life like this. Wife doesn't know. No one else knows. I'm literally, you know, crying on the inside and being destroyed on the inside. So we'll just finish in two minutes. Destroyed on the inside. I don't know where to go for help. I'm crying out. You know, do I love the, love the Lord? Answer is yes. Then you can say, you know, how can you love the Lord? But the fact is, I love the Lord. Do I love the word of God? Yes, I just love reading the word of God. But then, stuck in a rut, stuck in a really a prison, right? stuck in a rut. And um, God reaching out in so many different ways in that season. So many different ways. He would, you know, somebody would, you know, my mom would call and say, you know, are you doing okay? I saw you, I saw you, you, were, you were, I, I was praying for you and I, I saw that you were very sad, looking very sad. Are you doing okay? My uncle would call and say, you know, uh, you know, just when you're going on your bike, just wear your helmet. I think, uh, yeah, just be careful. Wait, what happened? No, 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 I was just praying, but just be careful. Right? The enemy was trying to, you know, calm and attack. And, and I would go, leave the house and my daughter would be fine. She was a toddler and she'd be fine, you know, great health. But I'll just come back after one day and she'll be like high fever and nose running and, and crying and and I would know what happened because I was opening the door. I knew immediately, looking at that, I knew immediately, hey, this was a problem. Because, you know, powerless to stop. Till I came to that place, I think it was one of the camps that pastor came and spoke and, and uh, you know, pastor, pastor Amy was praying for people and, you know, I, I was a youth advisor and, and I said, Lord, at whatever cost, no, at whatever cost, I want this to end. At whatever cost, God. Because I was too shameful. You know, if you know my wife, we knew each other from Sunday school days. Right? Children's church days, Sunday school, we knew. And then so, got romantically involved college days. And yeah. So for... You know, I just couldn't bring myself to hurt her or share this with her. So it was a secret. So I told the Lord, Lord, once I get to heaven, if ever I make it to heaven, <laughs> the kind of life was, if ever I make it to heaven, Lord, then let it be known. Till then, it's going to be our secret. Right? But then, you know, after that prayer, and I just felt that, God, whatever be the cost, whether it comes out in the newspaper, whether, you know, is I don't care. I want this to end. You know, that's why I said, we need to decide. I want this to end. And the Lord honored that. You know, I was in Mangalore, again, uh, you know, carrying my samples and everything. I was working for this clothing company. And at the end of the workday, I was just coming back to my hotel and just thinking, okay, I'm going to do this, this. You know, my wife calls. And out of the blue, she asks, hey, are you doing this? Right? Are you watching this? Are you doing this? And she has asked me this question before, two, three times. You know? I always lied and I always said no. But this time, ever since I made that prayer, Lord, at whatever cost, this time I said yes. 
Yes, I am. And that day it was a most painful day. She started crying on the phone. I remember just sitting on the pavement, you know, with my work bag and everything, and I'm wearing all these formal formal clothes. I just sat down and I'm just crying. I'm disappointed. You know, this person whom I knew for many years, I've hurt her deeply. I've lived a double life. I'm just crying. The way I've lived my life, and she's crying. And but that day, restoration began. You know, something something changed because. Praise God something changed because that shame was cut away what that secrecy and the shame that was exposed to the truth and that was cut away that's why that was exposed exposed sorry to the light and that was cut away and so began a year of restoration a year it was a painful year because it was a year of rebuilding what was broken in our lives what was broken in my life in our marriage it was a year of rebuilding that right and i remember some of those nights uh, my wife would i think it was it was a regular feature uh, she would unplug the modem the router and go to bed keeping it under her pillow that's how she would sleep right and uh, looking at that my heart would break It's like, what have I become? What have I done for this person who trusted me to distrust me to this extent? Because otherwise she couldn't sleep. What will he do? What will he watch? Right? She put the modem under her pillow and sleep. And this went on for some time. And then we had to do some things in the natural. I changed my subscription of the newspaper from Times of India to Hindu. <laughs> right times of india has all this party things and happening and hindu most boring newspaper in the world <laughs> i hope i don't get sued by the paper <laughs> change all that right and i would never walk into but those days i had to go punch in that order in internet thing you know internet cafe go there and we didn't we were not given laptops or anything I had to go and use that and punch in that order and i would dread that I always go in with a colleague. These guys will be wondering, what's wrong with this guy? No, we'll just let's go together. But the Lord gave the key. He said, "Renewing the mind is something that you need to do. Right? You need to renew the mind. You need to build back. You need to rebuild your strength." So I couldn't trust myself, and I was fine with that. I just wanted to do it with the help of others. So, you know, with other people, right? It was my family. It was just my spouse. So, rebuilding that. whole year and to a place of strength like to a place of strength where you know i was in this work it was i couldn't resign right this was the only thing uh, and then the lord said you know i want you to find victory here before you can quit i don't want you to flee i want you to find victory in this place right so the lord was doing this clean up and i would go back to the same hotel rooms the same hotel rooms sometimes it was the same room number right because the office would book and they'll know okay so the same room and uh, like pastor was sharing i would not even reach for the remote i won't touch the television in fact i will go and unplug it first of all so the lord brought me full circle to all these places you know mangalore and wherever god brought me back so i'm saying you know when i say that there is hope and it is possible it is possible right so it's been 21 years of living a life free of masturbation so it is possible so maybe you know the devil says hey you can't you know you can't go one day without it you can't go one week without it you know when the lord sets you free when the lord gives you his resources right when he says i am with you i am with you by the spirit you will put to death the deeds of the body amen amen so you know i i know we took a bit of time but um we'll take about 20 more minutes to do the yeah so we'll take about you know 15 20 minutes to discuss um to introspect and also discuss these questions in our groups and then we would pray and then pastor will come and minister so we'll take 15 minutes just to pray and during this time i just want you to you know be open uh open your heart to the lord and uh expect uh breakthrough 
in your own personal life, right? Uh, when I say breakthrough means if there are areas in your life where you say, God, I've been battling, I've been struggling, that I haven't seen victory, this, uh, this next 15 minutes as we pray, expect God to give you a breakthrough. Um, the Bible says that the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. So Isaiah 10, verse 27. The anointing, which is the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, removes burdens. So burdens are baits that are, you know, that's really putting us down. And yoke, you know, if you, uh, things that are just controlling us. Uh, literally, it says, the yoke, shall be taken from off your neck. So you try to picture this, you know, a yoke on your neck is like sometimes it is squeezing the light of life out of you, you know. Uh, and the Bible says the yoke will be destroyed. So if there are those burdens, the heavy things that are just weighing you down. Say, Lord, no, I just, I can't get out of this. The anointing, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in a moment, in an instant, can remove burdens and destroy yokes. That means you just say like, it's gone. How did it go? You cannot explain it in human terms. But you know the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. So that's what we're going to pray through in the next 15 minutes. Right? That God, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit remove burdens and destroy yokes. Things that, that seem to control us, let it just be gone. Because, and we can pray that on the basis of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Is that okay? So let's rise to our feet, please. The next 15 minutes. I want to thank God. Thank God for this day together. I want to say thank you to all of you who spent this day with us. I want to say thanks to all our staff, everybody who helped us. Let's just say thank you to all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Uh, and all our staff, everyone, volunteers who helped us. And thank you for putting this day together for us. Uh, that we could spend time. Thank you so much. Let's just take some time to pray. and Just open your heart to the Lord. And Father, we just thank you for this time together, Lord, and uh, for the time in the Word, for the time in worship, in your presence, the time in fellowship, and just learning from one another, listening to what you've been doing in each one's life. Thank you for the stories we heard. Thank you for the lessons we learned from each other, the things we could take from each other. Thank you for the fellowship. And Father, we want to pray together as men standing before you in your presence. God, each one of us have, are going through these battles and thank you for those of us, Lord, who've had breakthroughs, who've seen victories, who've seen deliverances, who've come out of our struggles. But Father, we want to pray right now for those who might be in the struggle, who might be having burdens on their lives, things that the enemy has put that's weighing them down, who might be having yokes upon them that seems to just be on their neck, almost squeezing the light of life out of them. Father, we thank you for the precious presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And right where each one of us is standing, and even for those who are watching online, wherever they may be watching from, right where we are, we ask that the Holy Spirit will minister to us personally. That the Holy Spirit will touch each and every life right now of God, each one of us. That He will come as our strengthener. He will come as our helper. He will come as our as our advocate. He will come as our intercessor. He will come as the one who stands right beside us. He will come as our burden bearer. He will come as the one who gives us breakthrough. He will come as the mighty Holy Spirit, the mighty anointing of God. And the Holy Spirit, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, by His presence and power will remove every burden from every life of God. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against every oppressive work of the enemy, or every addiction, or every sinful habit. In the name of Jesus, we renounce these things. We choose to be godly men. 
we choose to be men of righteousness we choose to be men who are consecrated unto God spirit soul and body we choose to be men who are sanctified by God set apart for God we choose to be holy vessels unto our God fit for the master's use and prepared for every good work we choose to say yes to the call of God to be holy unto him to be holiness unto the Lord to be vessels that are holy we say yes to be the temples of God that are holy and consecrated and right now in the name of Jesus we consecrate every part of our being spirit soul and body we consecrate our mind we consecrate our emotions we consecrate our appetites our desires our plans our dreams our aspirations we consecrate our relationships and we declare all of these belong to God all of these are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and right now in Jesus name we renounce every evil we renounce every form of sin we renounce every form of uncleanness and wickedness we are holy vessels unto our God and in Jesus name we shut every door we shut every door and we say devil you have no place in our lives sin has no place in our lives we declare that the old man has been crucified the power of sin over our lives has been destroyed that sin will not have dominion over us that we are partakers of the divine nature and that we escape the corruption that is in the world and now in the name of Jesus I take authority over every evil work I take authority over every unclean spirit Satan I take authority over you in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit I command every yoke of the enemy destroyed I command every burden of the enemy removed in the name of Jesus Satan leave now in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus every yoke of the enemy is destroyed every burden of the enemy is overthrown by the power of the Holy Spirit and we are free we are free because the Spirit of the Lord is here and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is freedom he is the one who sets the captives free he is the one who set us free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every part of our being is consecrated unto God it's holiness unto the Lord and father we pray that with the strength and the help of the Holy Spirit and by the power of your word we will perfect holiness and the fear of God that we will cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and that each one of us will perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord that every form of wickedness will be displeasing to us we won't even want to taste it we won't even want to go near it that purity and holiness will be our delights it'll be so pleasing to us so work in our hearts so work in our lives we thank you oh God we thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus purify purify our hearts purify our lives purify our minds purify our affections our sexual appetites all our appetites purify sanctify right now Lord let purity touch each one of us let purity just touch each of our lives our hearts our minds our emotions God purify our lives thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord Jesus oh 
Oh, we praise you. We praise you, God. You are a holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you. And Father, we just pray that each one of us will see great breakthroughs, great victories in our lives, walking in holiness and righteousness and living godly, consecrated lives in every area, over everything, that we will be victorious. And now unto Him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glorious throne. Unto him be glory, now and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Amen.